The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the July 15th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Steve B. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past? That's right, folks. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, how about we have an extraordinary one? Yep, let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but way more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. That's right. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Yep. Let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in the tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trading down 30 points. 27,301 is the print. S&P is off four. NASDAQ 100 is flat. Russell's down six tenths of a percent. The leader to the downside index-wise. That's nearly uh, nine bucks, ten dollars, really, to the downside. Semis are up seven, five, about a half a percent to the upside. New York Stock Exchange trading down 13. Wilshire off 55. Uh, uh, spot volatility is up 4% or 50 cents trading out of 12.89. Still below its 50-day exponential moving average. Gold's up a buck. Silver 12 pennies. Lights we crude off 55 cents. Lead the charge to the upside dollar-wise, individual stock-wise. It is uh, Galapagos up 17%. Not sure what's behind the move, but up 25 bucks trading out of 171.10. CyberArk Software up 8 bucks or 6%. Broadcom up a little over 1% or $3 and change. To the downside, it is Domino's Pizza, uh, down 13 bucks or nearly 5%. Netflix off 3%. That's about $11 to the downside. Surcor International down 14% or about 6 buckaroonies. So uh, great to be back with you. Always good to take a little bit of time off out here. So what are we looking at? Really interesting uh, trading sessions. Let's let's start by this. Uh, for those of you who haven't, haven't been around since uh, Tuesday uh, out here, no new market profiles or anything. So if we take a look at the daily, I don't have the weekly up here right now, but the daily, we can see that price uh, creamed above the uh, daily profile out here on uh, July 11th. Actually, July 10th inside the NQ, um, July 11th inside the uh, Dow. And so when we are above profiles, we don't see any resistance. We've got to ask ourselves, ah, well, where's the resistance, Steve-O? So let's go take a look. Let's go here from the equity futures contracts, which we're looking at, and just switch over to the monthly charts for the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000, the four indices that each of you may trade out here. So interestingly enough, we had suggested a long time ago when we drew this trend line in here that uh, we're still in a consolidation. We would be in a consolidation. I'm looking at the Dow on the upper left-hand chart. Let's just simply go ahead and expand this chart out here. All you and I did was connected the dots. That's all we need to do. We don't need to make trading in investing any more difficult than it already is. And we just simply connected the dots from the January highs in 2018 to the highs in October of 2018. You can see we're trading right on that trend line. The month of July is not over. It doesn't matter to me whether we're just slightly above it or that we've peaked above an employee. But, but here in the Dow, it is clearly, at least in my eyes, clearly at resistance. 
hmm, something to think about. If we take a look at the NDX 100, you'll see we're just trading slightly above its same potential resistance line. Now, in this case here, we're only connecting the dots, the highs from October in 2018, and then the highs from April in 2019 out there. So this is also the NDX 100 trading into resistance. If you take a look at the S&P 500, close but no cigar, close enough for your work, close enough for my work, even if the S&P moves a bit higher, it too is going to run into resistance again by the trend line that began in January 2018. And then you just simply use the uh, September 2018 level out there, connect those dots, and you can see the trend line. So what does that mean? Well, it means, hey, longer bend, by the way, in the Russell 2000, not really much for us to look at. This thing has been able to budge above the February 2019 highs out here. So just consider consolidating sideways at the moment. So what do you and I know? You and I know we drew these trend lines in here. We knew that uh, this would be or could be an area where the market uh, may find a top. We're in a consolidation pattern out here. And so that says that you and I need to be on the hunt, need to be on the lookout for those types of signals out here. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, you and I, we had been paying attention to the mere fact that the New York Stock Exchange was making higher highs but doing it with a declining, advanced decline oscillator out there. Now, just saying that doesn't mean anything. But if you go back and you review the chart of the New York Stock Exchange and you, lose, you just use those two tools alone, when you see those divergences, you know they can lead to some type of retracement or something more substantial than that. Now, more substantial than that always gets moving, always gets rocking, always gets rolling when the spot volatility index is above the 50-day exponential moving average. We're not there yet. We're not there. We may not get there. That level is 1489. That's at 50 day. You're trading right now at 1289. So two bucks below that area. I'm not suggesting we're going to get there today, but it is something to keep an eye on. Now, the advanced decline oscillator is still just slightly above zero. The reading is 18 and change out here. If that gets below zero, then that says, hey, you've got some type of retracement that is definitely or should be definitely underway. Now, if we take a look, if we step back from here in the New York Stock Exchange, because this is not going to generate any kind of topping signal for you. It just make it say it, it is a it is it is a weather report saying you better take the umbrella because it could start pouring. However, you and I use a set of tools out here to help us identify when the markets make tops and bottoms out there. We keep it relatively simple. And one of those patterns is the Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal. Price moving higher, doing less relative energy, which, by the way, the New York Stock Exchange, as it made a slightly higher high this morning, did just that. Now, so we've got signals that the market, you and I just took a look at the indices, that we are near a high or should be near high. Now, the market needs to communicate to you and I. That's the responsibility of buyers and sellers. We don't get ahead of ourselves out there because if we get ahead of ourselves, we could be doing the right thing at the wrong time. And when you do that, it's like you're out of control. You're driving, the car is spinning, your eyes focus on the tree when they really should be focused on the open road ahead. Because if you focus on the tree, guess what you're going to run into? The tree. So what we, you and I do so that we don't uh, spin our car out of control and focus on the wrong thing, we focus on the right thing. And that would be some type of bearish reversal candle today. We don't have it just yet. But if we get a close below 13,202.44 in the New York Stock Exchange, it will signal a top. Now, you can't trade the New York Stock Exchange. We'll go look at the other indices. We get back from this break and any other questions that have come in. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk.
If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go take a look at, uh, we had a request inside the Tiger's Den from SM out here to take a look at uh, Kroger. Uh, Kroger, I once had a, a job back in groceries back when I was 15 years old for Kroger. Kind of interesting to ask me about Kroger because it was right off the express. I was in, uh, off of, um, I believe it was off of Telegraph Road. Um, way out in uh, Dearborn and, and the expressway out there. And I remember the expressway had opened up and there was a car that was actually sp did spin out of control um, and ran right into a, a telephone pole. It was off the expressway. So it was in the, uh, it was in the, uh, you know, the, uh, the merge onto lanes or what have you just rip the car in half out there. And, and really when it, when, when you are spinning out of control, uh, many people will focus on, well, this, literally there's, there's studies out there. If your car is out of control, it, many people will focus, their eyes will shift to, uh, to some object like a tree. If you ever run across, have you ever seen a car that's hit a tree and, and that was the only thing that was in sight you know, for hundreds of yards out there. So make, you know, what, as Tom says, what you focus on grows. Well, there is nothing more truer than that. So focus on the positive. But in any event, uh, with regard to Kroger out here, let's begin by taking a look at our three TAS market profiles, the daily, the weekly, and then the monthly, which are on the right-hand side. They also happen to have the quarterly. Now, SM doesn't have a position inside of uh, Kroger. We can see that on the daily chart out here, the one on the very left-hand side, there is no center of the box, I meaning no cyan color, blue colored line. Uh, that's because it actually is there. It just happens to be at the same price point as the bottom of the box at 2156. That should be really strong support out there. The price is trading below the weekly profile and maybe trading all the way down into the monthly level of 2081. So this is what I would uh, suggest to USM just in taking a look at these charts here. If you're looking to get in a Kroger, I would say maybe just wait, maybe maybe just wait uh, but if you but you know 2081 you're trading at 2202 maybe it's a long-term position i don't know uh 2081 should be pretty good support but let's go take a look at our other charts let's try to figure out did uh, you know when we take a look at this daily chart uh, was there any kind of bottom signal 
we take a look at Kroger. So let's pull over our daily chart. Let's go take a look around here. And what we can see here is as uh, Kroger was making its lows in the daily time frame, right around June 26, it did it with a TD setup nine count. But my eyes see that there was a slightly lower low on July the uh, second out here. But what, you, what we can also do is we can use our wave count tool. So the high I'm going to use out here, because it's the one that's on my screen, from back on February 28th out there, if we just start doing our counts to the downside from there, we're going to see that that little bit of a lower push below that TD setup nine count actually took us to wave number seven, letter G, which we know on a daily basis is a, a bottoming signal out there. And therefore, you had two of them, uh, along with a, a daily bottom of its box and center of the box right at that uh, same price point. So really strong. Now, would you go ahead and enter a position inside of Kroger today based on that, knowing that today is going to be day nine of that TD setup nine count? And the answer, my friend, is uh, absolutely positively not because we've really had very little movement off to the bottom. And now you've got a potential topping signal that is in play out here. And so therefore this says ASM, this, stay away uh, for the uh, moment with regard to that. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, any bottoming signals out here? Well, we can see that from a weekly standpoint, it's gotten to wave number six, letter F. So maybe a slightly lower low would be helpful there. Until price gets above 22.52, you don't really wanna to touch Kroger unless there's some solid bottoming pattern, which we already had. We definitely had that on a daily chart, but not much in the way of movement. And now you've got a potential topping signal out there. The monthly chart out here really suggests that, hey, a slightly lower low between that of uh, lower low would be but between the low of October and 2017 could get us to wave number seven as well out there as well as it uh, looks like on a monthly basis would be TD uh, set up uh, eight uh, count out here. So I would just sit tight, SM. I would just simply sit tight. Let's go to our first caller. It's Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Great, Steve. Uh, I wanted to look at Amaron, AMRN. If you recall, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that my gal had taken that, uh, you know, that she went to the doctor and asked her their drug for high, yeah. reducing her cholesterol and high triglycerides. And Yes. Her tiger rights dropped from 2300 to 230 I thought it was a medical miracle. And anyway, I bought some options on the stock, ran up to 23 Oh, I lost you. No, I'm here. I'm listening. Oh. Anyway, uh, it came back down. I got out because one day it jumped up three and a quarter. Somebody wrote it up. But I got out, and I'm trying to get back in or looking to get back in. How do you know where's a good spot to get back in, and what kind of a time frame do you look at? So great question out here. And, you know, to begin with, just to get a feel for what ticker symbol AMR and Amarin Corp is doing, you know, we can just take a quick glance and see our daily, our weekly, and our monthly timeframes. Now, it's our daily time frame here that gives us uh, the most information, I would say. Uh, and that is that uh, price is trading within a bullish structure daily profile. Bullish in structure because the center of that box, that's where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value, is 2219. But price is below that. So if that was fair value, the buyer should have been able to hold it up. It looks like sellers here, Ron, are going to try to push price down to the bottom of that profile at 2105. So that may be, may be a spot where you would uh, find an entry point. Ideally, you know, you would you would see some type of other bottoming signal other than just a test of support. But if we take a look at the uh, this daily chart out here that I'll put up, I don't really see um a a topping signal per se i see i see a consolidation pattern you and i talked about that last time and price in essence has remained in that consolidation pattern and there becomes the real issue you and i don't know because price is inside this consolidation i'll just simply here go ahead and kind of mark this off here here in essence is our consolidation if it couldn't bust it to the upside is it going to bust it to the downside and come all the way back into the 16 dollar level but the answer to your question with regard to where would you take that initial entry on, a, on an attempt again 
I would have to say 2105 at this stage, as long as price remains below 2190. And then um, what you can do is maybe take a look at volume. You see, there was a breakout, so to speak, because there was this gap to the upside on July 2nd, had volume of 42 million shares. Friday's pullback was 6 million shares. Today, you're about 3.5, so maybe another six or so. So volume is pulling back. So it's the 2105 area, Ron, that would give you that signal. If price closes below that, then you and I have to wait for some type of pattern. Now, it may be a TD setup nine count pattern. I don't know what pattern it might be that would be that would unfold. Uh, we just have to wait and see as price if price were to break below 2105. What pattern is it that's forming? Maybe it's an A to B equals CD pattern, which would set up a Gartley buy. But until we get there, I don't know. So I have to say to you that the answer is 2105 would be the first place that you would take a look at it. You'd certainly like to see volume decreasing as price pulls back to that area. It's not that far to go, only you know less than 70 cents to the downside. Um, sure. So that's what I see out there. Does that answer okay, your super. question? Thank you much. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Great. You bet. Good to hear from you. That, that was a Ron in Denver, Colorado. Amron Corp. A-M-R-N is a ticker symbol. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls to sign up today the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's see here. Let's go back to the uh, markets. Uh, we've taken care of the questions that have come in thus far, but I would love to hear from you, 877-927-6648, or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. So back to the indices. Uh, we had just uh, really taken a look at the New York Stock Exchange, and uh, we're watching for a potential uh, top out here. Uh, because, well, for several reasons, but but uh, when we take a look at the daily charts, we see some significant patterns on there, at least notable patterns worth paying attention to, especially in light of the uh, resistance levels that the indices have hit out there. So the New York Stock Exchange, we know what we're looking for there. I provided you with that number. And for the S&P 500, uh, it's moved higher today. Also, uh, a rose momentum indicator signal still intact out here. Now, it's iffy because if there was some real strength to come into the close day at 4 o'clock, that pattern could disappear. Uh, but at this stage, let's go with what we have at 131 in the afternoon. We can see that price moving higher and with less relative energy, always worth paying attention to, especially if there was some type of bearish reversal candle to form. As we speak, just yet yes the candle is red but that doesn't make it bearish there is no bearish reversal signal um, if we were to close below the open most certainly from uh, Friday then you get a bearish engulfing uh, candle session out here um, we will watch 2997 26 to be exact that would be a key level of support that if broken I would set up a at least a retracement if not a move back to the breakout area which is 2762 yeah you don't hear that too many places, but you hear it here uh, during the Trader's Ed show. We're not there yet. First things first, right? First things first. We got to keep our eyes glued in the right uh, spot, uh, not the tree, uh, just the right spot. Just pay attention, let the market do its thing, and communicate to both you and I out there. What else are we watching? Well, we're watching the uh, NASDAQ 100. What do we know about the NASDAQ 100? Well, uh, we know that today could be the high of today, could be the high in the market. Why? Because it completes a Tommy DeMarc setup nine count. Now, the nine count bar was Friday. We know that a top or a bottom can form on the bar following bar nine. For example, in the NDX 100, it was the bar following bar nine that formed the low back in June. Makes sense that it might make form, may form the pattern that forms the high in July. Hey, how about that? Now, the key level here in the NDX 100 is really going to be 77, 35, 67 on any pullback because that's where really price broke out. Below that, it's that timber to the downside out there. So we'll watch the NDX 100 tomorrow. If it makes a higher high out there, then that negates the uh, pattern altogether. The pattern will exist. It will have completed. It already did that on Friday, but it won't confirm the topping signal. So there you go, inside the NDX 100. What else do we have going on inside the market? Well, to take a look at the transports out here. The transports are where? In wave number seven or likely wave number seven, that's letter G. We take a look at that on Stevie's chart. Now, this can continue to extend out there because wave number seven was actually Friday, but today was a slightly higher high, so it's now today, and you don't confirm wave G until you make a lower high in the market, so we won't really know about this until tomorrow, but nonetheless, we are on uh, Stevie Wonder singing in the key of G mode when it comes to the Dow transports. And then let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite. Speaking of Stevie Wonder singing in the key of G, just take a look at the NASDAQ composite. Now, the NASDAQ composite on Friday completed its TD7 nine count pattern. That is no longer going to be the pattern that would identify the top out here. Why? Because today is a higher high. Friday's session was the bar following bar nine. But uh, don't fret out there. You see, the previous high that was made inside the NASDAQ composite, which took place back here in April, well, guess what it was formed with? That's right, singing in the key of G. Can it do it twice in a row out here? I don't have the answer to that, but we'll have the answer to that soon. You're still in wave number seven. That'll continue until you see a lower high. So the earliest possible confirmation of that would be tomorrow. But we kind of get the gist. We don't know. Now, look, these patterns, they haven't confirmed they could fail. And if they fail, what does that mean? That means price headed higher. In fact, these are momentum patterns. And if these momentum patterns fail, it just says the market should continue to moment to the upside. We can try to figure out where those prices are, but, but let's not uh, focus on that because we're just simply not there yet.
Now, if we take a look at the other indices, we don't have those same patterns in play out here. What do you mean we don't have those same patterns out here? I mean, we don't have those same patterns out here. If you take a look at the Dow, you can see that this is only in wave number four. That's letter D. No, no TD setup nine count anywhere near completion out here. Uh, you're only potentially in day number three there. So inside the Dow, we're going to have to find some other signal because it ain't there on our daily screen. But the other markets, it might get the message. It might get the memo out there from the S&P or the NASDAQ or the NASDAQ Composite or the New York Stock Exchange. You know what I mean out there? And if you don't, okay. Now, you know, and you're probably sick and tired of hearing this. You know how Stevie says gold has made a fairly significant top out there. And I know I'm just one of one. I believe, because everybody else is saying, no way, Stevo. Okay. Well, you could say, no way, Stevo. Maybe I'm dead wrong. If you take a look at the XAU, though, interestingly enough, we can see that it is beginning to form the Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal, just as it did down here at the bottom when it confirmed with the bullish engulfing candle. We don't have a bearish reversal signal yet. Price is just trading slightly below Stevie's green line. But this says, be careful. Be careful. You've got topping patterns in the XAU as well. Not confirmed, but you want to be careful. Uh, so uh, let's see, what else do we have out here that we can take a, a look at? I think that's kind of it. Uh, no other questions that I see out there. And uh, so, uh, so I don't know, where, where, where else should we look? Let me just see if there's anybody who's written in that has a, a question out here. No, it's quiet in, uh, it's a, I look at oil. Tucker, I did not look at oil. So because Tucker asked to look at oil, let's go look at oil. What are you doing with oil, Tuck? Tell me what you're doing, and we'll try to help out. So let's go take a look at the, I uh, believe it is the uh, August contract for a uh, light sweet crude that we are trading right now. So let's go take a look at it. Uh, trading out at 59.62. If we just simply take a look at profiles out here, nothing at the moment, all right? If we take a look at uh, light sweet crude, here's what we know. Uh, there's a brand new profile that uh, formed today inside of light sweet crude. And uh, price is above that level. 58.98 is the top of that box. Typically, that is a bullish signal here for light sweet crude typically it's a bullish signal for light sweet crude if price gets back below 58.98 that's the number you'd be watching here tucker then at that stage something that should be bullish wasn't bullish that would suggest to me now this is a bullish structured uh daily profile that price would move down to 56.53 to 57.51 the center or the bottom of its box out there but uh, i believe let me see if i still have it up on my screen out here I was just had a quick conversation about light sweet crude earlier um, before the show went on. And uh, if I take a look at this daily time frame chart for light sweet crude, looking for some type of topping signal, I don't have it. I see it is in wave number four, letter D. We know that significant resistance exists up at 6302. We know that uh, when it did form um, a topping signal, which was after bar number nine, right out here, you see letter C on it. Price pulled right back to support that held 5607. This chart here doesn't show the new profile. The E signal chart does. So that's one that we'd pay attention to. So, Tucker, I don't see a reason to take a new position, Light Sweet Crude, to the upside, or really, quite frankly, to the downside as we speak just yet. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. And I overlooked something that uh, one of our denners, John in the Tiger's Den, Mr. Z, had posted in the den. So, uh, and that is that uh, today, uh, if the S&P closes above 3,002, that it'll create a uh, Tommy DeMarc uh, sequential uh, signal out there. Won't uh, generate necessarily the sell signal, but it would be a uh, 13 count out here. And, and John, I would also say uh, it would be a TD combo. Uh, count uh, so uh, and the, the the sequential system doesn't show up as often as the uh, nine count uh, so I primarily focus on the uh, nine count uh, for the show and inside the newsletter out here but but here in the s p 500 you could have uh, two patterns. In essence, completing this at the same time, you've got Stevie's Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal, perhaps a TD sequential sell signal out there. Uh, you know, you want to watch 2997. Uh, that's Stevie's green line out there that has held this support ever since the bottom, uh, basically since it looks like about June the 5th or so. What was the actual date? Uh, June, the, yeah, June the 5th. Pretty good guess. Um, uh, and so a close below that line would suggest that uh, okay there's some type of uh, uh, some kind of retracement top that would be in play now we'd say top in this case here because of my signal Tommy DeMarc's uh, sequential uh, setup out there so no other questions uh, that are that are uh, that I see out here so um, you know let me kind of go back because because uh, Ron had asked a good question I don't know that I fully answered it I tried to answer it specifically for his uh, uh, for his stock that he was taking a look at and and that is uh, you know how do you know when to buy in or you know, topping or bottom signals in essence in this case here he was looking for for bottoming signals or, or when do you know it, it, and kind of on the topping so it's, it's kind of along the same path out here right so we're looking at daily charts and we're taking a look at all these potential signals that are out there but how do we know if they're going to come into being or not so when we get to the bigger picture I don't Look, I, I look at all time frame charts out there, but uh, I step back and say, well, if the daily is generating a signal, what's the five hour chart doing? Is the five hour chart generating, you know, just kind of stepping back versus going the shorter term, kind of stepping back a bit out here. So, you know, because you and I both work 25 hour days out there and I know it's, you know, it sounds impossible, but you and I, because we're so efficient, we can squeak out another hour 
in the day, especially because of daylight savings time, right? You, you, if you move back an hour, they, well, where'd the hour go? It, right? So you and I were working 25 hours, so you've got a five-hour chart, five times five, you got 25. I, you know, of course, I'm being facetious, but I'm not being facetious about using the 300-minute chart out here specifically for the futures contracts. Don't use this. Go ahead and use it if you want. For the indices and ETFs that are, in essence, trading in a six and a half hours or individual stocks, don't do that. It, it, don't it, no, don't do that. But here, here's what we can see. So if we do take a look at the ES Mini out here, uh, it has formed a TD setup nine count. And price is now trading below Stevie's green line. That's at 3,018. So this is giving us a signal. Now, this signal here may just simply be a pullback uh, to where price most recently broke out. And inside the ES Mini for the five-hour time frame, that's at the price point of 299250 that would be the number that you would be watching. Any move below that, and price heads back to 296575. So the five-hour time frame chart uh, for the uh, ES Mini, not that we don't need to worry about the wave count out there, a TD setup nine count pattern that appears to be confirmed. This bar is going to complete at 2 o'clock, so another 14 minutes, probably relatively safe. If we look at the five-hour time frame chart here for the NQ, we're going to see the potential of a beautiful butterfly. Now, the real butterfly Stevie had would have... Um, completed around 8,034.50. But this is more of, instead of a butterfly, this is more of a three drive to a top type of pattern out here. We don't have the, we, we actually do have a bearish uh, reversal candle just yet. But in this case here, because the bar of the nine o'clock time frame bar was so small, and this bar is relatively small, I don't know if we're going to get that signal or not out here. So it's very close, but uh, on a five hour time frame, you've got the uh, three drive to a top inside of the NQ. So two five hour charts are suggesting, okay, pay attention, pay attention. Don't take action, pay attention. Let the market do what it's supposed to do. Uh, don't guess the market. I don't want to guess the market. I, because I can't. I can't control what the market can do. What we can do is say, hey, there's a certain set of signals that provide you and I with an edge, a higher probability of taking some type of uh, aggressive action. And you do want to take aggressive action at the early stage of a trade at a bottom or at a top out there because your risk reward is the best out there. Uh, but I'm still suggesting don't back up the truck just yet. Now, we talked about the Dow and how the Dow on a daily basis did not have a, a pattern, a topping signal or pattern out here. If we do take a look at the five hour chart, this is uh, as opposed to a three drive to a top Stevie, this is a butterfly sell pattern. Now the butter and a TD setup nine count pattern out here. And, and which all were both were confirmed with a bearish reversal candle, the old the dark cloud cover. Now as two bar reversal candles go, it's one of the weaker ones, but you're getting follow through. So I like to see follow through to confirm a pattern. We're now getting it. Now, follow through in this case here, you'd want to see a close blow 27,263. Not necessarily at two o'clock, but by at some point, maybe by the end of the trading session this afternoon, a close blow 27,263. At least the five hour chart would be saying, okay, sayonara, baby. Here's the pattern that's in play. And price is going to go down and test or should test 26,910 out there. That is where price most recently broke out inside the Dow for the five hour time frame. So, again, the five hour time frames for the Dow, the ES, and the NQ are showing us signals out here. The Russell 2000 isn't any place for you and I to get signals right now because they just aren't, they just really aren't out here. Here's the five hour time frame. Really nothing much here to uh, identify any type of top or bottom. There's nothing on the daily time frame out here that uh, identifies a top or a bottoming pattern. So the Russell 2000 is not the place for you and I to be focused on and looking at because it's just, it's not there. So that's what I would look at. If I go to the short-term time frame charts, I just don't have an edge here just yet inside the ES Mini. Um, I, if I look at the ES Mini, uh, here's what it's doing on a 30-minute basis. If we're looking for a bottoming signal, well, we might be there uh, with the TD set up a nine count on a 30-minute basis. So that says if the lows of today get taken out, this bottoming type signal here would have failed, and that price is likely headed back to 3,005. 50 out here so but you need to see a failure of this pattern we don't have the failure of that pattern uh, just yet but we might get that uh, before the end of the trading session today so today's close could be a muy importante out there 
Um, so that's all that uh, Stevie's really got out here as uh, as I take a look at the uh, market. So let me just check real quickly, see if there's any other questions. If you've got some questions in the den, fire away. Uh, actually, it looks like we're going to go to the two-minute wrap. Uh, we've got about another 10 seconds. So Nick has a question. Let's try to take a look at it. Can you look closer at the Dow at a small time frame? And can I take a look at the DAX? Well, I, I, and the Dow itself, here's the Dow through the equity futures contract out here. Um, you've got this TD set up nine count. Again, Nick, it's the low of the day. If the low of the day, if we have a bad close, I mean, if we, if we have bad close coming into close, really terrible language out there. Expect 27 to 16 to be at the level where the YM would head to. That's your short term chart. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Nick also wanted to take a look at the uh, DAX out here. And we take a look at the DAX. This is the weekly time frame chart here. And uh, what we notice is that when it formed its high, this is back in the uh, early part of July out here a couple weeks ago, uh, what we can see is it did so with wave number seven. That's letter G. And since then, we've seen a pullback. Now, on a weekly chart, 12, 225 is going to be its level of support. If it gets below that, that's Stevie's green line, then that might spell a pullback to 10, 681. That's where the DAX most recently broke out on a weekly time frame. I don't have the topping signal 
per se on the daily time frame out here, Nick. But we, you know, the importance of showing this is we've shown a couple of charts uh, during today's show that are in wave number seven, letter G out there. And so you just really want to pay attention. They don't always turn into tops or bottom. If they did, I would just tell you to back up the truck and fire away right now in those indices where they're present. But like the transports as an example, but that's not how you and I can trade. Or, or should trade out there. So let's just wait for the market to do its thing. Today's uh, close is going to be important. Tomorrow's session is also important out there. Uh, this is the uh, weatherman just simply uh, looking at the charts. We've got the super Doppler up. It's just saying, you know, be careful out here um, in the uh, markets. Uh, these patterns may not come to fruition. Look, the volatility index is still well below its 50 day exponential moving average out there. Um, big symbols. Here we go. The 50 day exponential moving average is at 1489. We're at 1285. The meaning there is just simply that there's plenty of liquidity inside of the uh, marketplace. So uh, we spent the hour here uh, taking a look at what the indices are doing, what things to be watching for. Uh, we've looked at the five hour time frame charts inside the equity futures contract. We're looking for signals. We'll probably have a much better idea tomorrow at one o'clock which is when I'll be back next. But in the meantime, stick around because it's an amazing lineup. My favorite polar bear, David White, he's up next. And then you got Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's up from three to five. Stevie Son, he'll be back with you tomorrow, 1 p.m. So have a terrific Monday, really a marvelous Monday. And we'll just have a terrific Tuesday when it gets here. Take care and see you soon.